Welcome to the Natural Language Processing with Java video. My name is Richard Reese and I will be guiding you through this series of videos. I have over 17 years of experience in aerospace and corporate training. I've written several books about Java. One book dealing with CEC pointers specifically. I've done a lot of work in telephony also the first few years of my career. Currently I'm teaching at uh, Tarleton State University in uh, Steamville, Texas. In this particular video, we'll be doing an overview of the actual course to see exactly what is being taught in this particular volume. Specifically, we'll learn about Java and NLP in terms of how, or how NLP can be supported using Java. It's basically an introduction to NLP and the different techniques used within NLP. In the first video, we'll be looking at NLP or natural language processing. We'll find it's used to enhance a lot of applications. We'll look at the essential elements, the essential tasks used to perform NLP processing and see how it's used to support many different types of problems out there. We'll find that quite often, at least in some of the more sophisticated processing, They'll be using neural networks. These neural networks are in turn using models. And what we want to do is learn more about the models, how they can be used, and eventually how we can train a model. And specifically, we'll look at how Java can be used to support NLP. There's a number of different techniques in the core, and plus specialized Java APIs. We'll be looking at data acquisition after that. And this is the process of capturing data. When you delve data, you need to capture it from some source and work with it. In the data acquisition video, we will find how to actually access data. Now, it turns out that data can be acquired from a number of different places, a number of different sources. In that case, we may have to learn many different techniques to acquire the data. We are not able to look at all the possible sources of data in this video. Instead, we'll look at a few. Specifically, we'll look at how to extract text from a web page. Web pages are quite often a valuable source of data, easily accessible. But we may want to look at a Wikipedia. It turns out while you may view Wikipedia in a browser, in essence, you'd access the information is better to use a specialized API such as Blinky to do the actual uh, extraction of text from the Blinky video article. There are a number of different file formats, you, files you may want to pull data from. We'll look at several common file formats and see how we pull data from those files. And we'll also look at how to access text from a PDF file. PDF files are very common. You can download quite a few off the internet. Once we have downloaded or acquired the data, what we want to do is clean the data. The next video after that deals with data cleaning. In this case, we may have acquired our data, but we need to prepare it for a particular analysis. And we may basically clean the data up so it's more presentable, more useful, more accurate, things of that nature. So it's important to clean the data to remove any particular errors that may be found in the data. Perhaps there's misspellings, perhaps the data is incomplete, many things of that nature. While there are many different possible data cleaning type of activities, specifically we'll look at some basic cleaning activities, basic cleaning operations. We'll be looking at how to remove stop words. Stop words are basically words such as the, and, of, which are not always necessary for some types of processing. We'll find there's multiple techniques for removing stop words. And of course, we want to validate the data, make sure it's correct. We may want to validate a date. We may want to validate an email address, things of that nature. After that, we're looking at finding the parts of text. Typically, we'll break it down in what's called tokens. The tokens are then used in other downstream processing tasks. Uh, by downstream, I mean basically this stage or a particular stage of a process will produce an end result. The end result is then used in a later task. Once our data has been acquired and cleaned, then what we typically want to do next is the basic units of text. Now, these are typically called tokens, and they typically correspond to words. In this part of the video, we'll be looking at how to perform simple tokenization using the Java Chord SDK. There are several techniques that work fairly well for most or many different text processing operations. However, it turns out for specialized documents, we may need specialized tokenizers. We may have a, perhaps medical documents. We need to go out there and pull out or access these tokens. Therefore, you may find that specialized Java APIs are used for that purpose. This includes when we want to go out there and look at different languages other than English. Another thing we'll look at is how to find the stem and a lemma of a word. The stem is the elementary root of a word. For example, on the word walking, the stem is walk. The lemma of a word refers to more of the, what they call the dictionary meaning of a word. It turns out that both these techniques are helpful and useful for different types of processing. And the last thing we'll do in this particular volume is finding sentences. In this particular video, we want to look and see exactly how we extract sentences from text. Once we have our basic tokens or basic elements, what we want to do is go out there and look at these, reorganize, if you like, into different units. A very common unit we want to access is a sentence. Many of the downstream activities revolve around sentences. The process of isolating a sentence in a document is called sentence boundary disambiguation. And this section will learn why that particular process is hard. 
it turns out it's not as simple as looking for end of sentence using a period, a question mark, or exclamation mark. Or in particular, it can be difficult and that we find them in many different places, such as in numbers, such as abbreviations, such as Mr., Mrs., things of that nature. So what we want to learn is how to use different Java Core JDK techniques to go out and perform the disambiguation. We may find that these techniques do not always work as well. We may need for specialized APIs to actually perform this process. Again, for specialized type of data, we may want to basically use specialized SVD type of APIs. Sometimes we may find the data is so specialized or so weird, if you, for lack of a better term, we may want to train a model to perform this specialization for us. We'll see exactly how to do that. To actually develop a good understanding or fulfill the, the objectives of this course, you need a good understanding of Java. Uh, basically, understand things like inheritance, polymorphism, experience using a Java API is always uh, good. We'll be using specifically NetBeans 8.2 and Java 1.8 in this video. However, other versions of these versions of NetBeans and Java 1.8 may be useful. However, bear in mind that some of the examples in the video will be using some Lambda expressions which are only found in Java 1.8 and later. If you don't want to use NetBeans, other IDEs can be used such as Eclipse. Other versions, again, Java can be used also. The demonstration we'll perform here in the videos will be on a Windows 10 system. However, there's no really specialized hardware requirements. If you have a very large document, for example, or specialized processing, uh, perhaps you may need to go out there and acquire access uh, more sophisticated hardware. However, for the purposes of this video sequence, that's not really an issue. 